Um, so hi everyone, my name is Jordan, and in this talk, I will try to take you on a journey um, to see the mental health tech industry from the bird's eye. And after doing that, ask the toughest question anyone may ask, which is, what does the future hold? And can technology really help us become happier? Um, and to start this conversation, I want to start with a few words about the mental tech industry evolution. Um, so we started with traditional therapy, what we all imagine when we hear the term mental health, a room with a bunch of sofas and a psychotherapist. Though already in the 60s, start, therapists started offering mental health support through the phone. And in the 70s and 80s, a few software programs were created with the development of a PC. But it's true that it wasn't until the 90s that online therapy started to develop. And to be honest, it took a while for these industries to form um, and for us as audience to adopt it. Only around 2010, online therapy like we all know it and companies like Talkspace and Lyra and BetterHelp started to form. And many new opportunities seem to be opening up in this market. Um, and then came COVID. A few important things that COVID did to the mental health tech industry. So first, it created a massive need that was never seen before. And it was sometimes referred to as the pandemic behind the pandemic. People were isolated and lonely and worried about their health and career and future. And according to the CDC report in 2020, most US adults suffered from either stress, anxiety, or some depression symptoms. Um, and suicide became the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 years old individuals. And this immense need was literally out there. Everyone were, was talking about it and it, um, the awareness grew and it really accelerated processes in the mental tech industry. Um, and it also changed the way we look at mental health technologies from nice to have to a must have, because that was the only way uh, for mental health to reach us at home which was extreme, extremely important for this industry. So the market responded uh, with the VC investments reaching almost $7 billion in 2021 and tech companies forming, um, reaching this peak of 20,000 mental health apps uh, available in the market today, according to the American Psychological Association report. And more than 90% of US large employers today support mental health benefits. That's also uh, something that happened um, due to, to COVID because everyone realized that it's important and supporting employees is important. So more than 20,000 mental health apps are in the market today. Why do we need so many and what have we learned? So the first thing I think we've learned is that mental health is more than the absence of mental disorder. I love this sentence by the WHO because I think it really represents um, what is the, the things that are happening in the market today. Because today, mental health is about building our emotional resilience. And indeed, many solutions we see today in the market expand the term mental health, not just providing therapy to those in need, but also exploring other ways to provide help to the general population and to practice mental well-being in, in, in a whole new way. And let me just explain what I mean by that. Um, so life is a journey, that's a cliche, um, but today many mental um, well-being solutions are about supporting this journey. So in 2022, practicing our mental well-being includes practicing our sleep, finding techniques to reduce our overall stress, develop our careers and, and, and interpersonal skin, skills, and work on our relationships with spouse and siblings and more. Um, this is what we call preventative mental health and the mental tech industry supports this trend. And I'll just give a few examples. So let's take Peanut. 
Peanut defined itself as a safe space for women to meet and find support around fertility, pregnancy, motherhood, and menopause. So all stages of being a woman. And you can find experts if needed to support you, uh, like doulas and parenting experts and mental health professionals um, and so forth. So they took this um, uh, experience of being a woman and they try to support us in each phase in the way. And let's take Calm, for example. They, we all know Calm, I don't need to um, uh, introduce them, but they focus on meditation and mindfulness, which alone can be considered men preventative mental health care. But they do another thing. Uh, Calm also conducted a research a few years ago that confirmed that many of their paying users use Calm to go to sleep. And they started offering a few tracks or, or app modes according to user goals and customize the experience according to their, to their wishes, to their goals. So this is another example of taking um, our life goals and kind of breaking them down. Um, and if we mention sleep, sleep and mental health are closely related. Sleep deprivation can provide can provoke anxiety and depression. Um, and improving our sleep is a key component of preventative mental health care. Um, and it's a developing space with many new players entering the market, like Somaris, which are FDA approved, um, and Sleep Reset and Mind Labs and more. Each of them takes a different approach and, and tries to help a specific audience um, deal with insomnia. And lastly, um, there is also a huge um, niche of inclusive therapy. Um, many apps recently started providing uh, solutions for specific for a specific audience that needs special care, uh, like people of color or LGBTQ Q plus community, um, and help them cope with their unique challenges, helping us as a society increase diversity and equity. So to sum this up, um, the market today is definitely going to this direction, being more specific and accurate on one hand, but being more focused around one or two subjects help us as individuals develop a whole experience, a whole new life experience, if you will. Um, so a bit more specific, but in general, we get more diversity, um, more solutions, and more options. Another huge trend in mental health is removing the barriers and stigma around mental health. For decades, therapy was something people were ashamed of, and taking medications were, was a sign of going crazy. Um, and it was a gradual change of opening up, but it started with the internet revolution, forums, uh, social media discussions, and now community-based apps that help us melt the shame around this topic and talk about it a bit more. And this trend continues with more and more mental health um, solutions providing a user experience that is very friendly and gamified and fun. And they basically make us want to practice. Um, and and it, it's something, it began to be something fun that we all want to participate, like these two examples of Happy Fi and Headspace, but there are many more. Um, so that's another trend. Um, now, another important aspect, uh, if we want to talk about the futuristic experience in mental health, um, is the technology that we will be using. Traditionally, Technology was used as a way to replace manual processes with automatic ones and offer the same product or services at scale. But when we talk about scale, mental health has already seemed like the hardest place to do that um, because scale means replacing human interaction with technology. But therapy really requires that human connection or, or does it? Actually, in recent years, mental health solutions found creative ways to scale, like offering some self-help tools, 
um, text therapy, pre-recorded videos, and more. But I'm going to talk about the future and how this space is changing dramatically in recent years. Um, and of course, I talk about machine learning and natural language processing and how they are changing the industry. So there's a lot of research um, conducted and a lot of money spent in this area, and there are many encouraging results. Um, and though we still cannot fully replace human therapy, uh, we discovered it actually offers a lot of other advantages. Um, for example, um, chatbots and self-help tools are available 24 seven. So if we experience anxiety in the middle of the night, they can help us through. And it sometimes feels more confidential. Um, starting a conversation with a bot, uh, a lot of times will not require any identifiable information. Um, and AI in general provides more opportunities to learn things about ourselves. They learn our patterns and offer mood tracking and encourages us when we practice daily. Um, and let's take Webot an, as an example, Wobot. Um, it's an evidence-based chatbot uh, using known techniques such as CBT to help users deal with anxiety and depression completely without a human interface, just to chat. And they're conducting multiple studies to show efficacy, and they actually have many good and, and surprising results. Um, and they help users improve um, depression and anxiety. Um, so they have great outcomes. Um, and as these technologies improves, uh, the, as, and as this technology improves, the market is growing and many big players are forming in this market, like Wiza and Replica. Um, Wiza lately got an FDA approval to treat chronic pain and Replica have also added this interesting feature of a 3D avatar uh, that you can personalize and interact with. And that's another interesting layer of uh, the future of these chatbots. 3D avatars and soul machines are basically taking our humanized bots to the next level to create a more, more emotional connection with a bot. And it's not science, science fiction, it's, it's here. Um, more players are, are entering this market like Cookie and Replica that I already mentioned. And we will be seeing more of that in the next decade. Um, VR, AR, and the metaverse uh, provide another interesting opportunity. Now, to be fair, experiments with VR already started back in the 90s um, because psychologists were very intrigued by this technology. Um, creating an alternative reality uh, to the one patients are currently experiencing um, it, it provides endless therapy opportunities. Um, so it's clear why they were intrigued. Um, and in recent years, as these technologies evolve, uh, thanks to Meta and other big players in the market, we see more and more interesting players entering the space. And I'll give you again, just two examples, um, just to open our mind to the future. Um, so XR Health, are working with occupational therapists, um, physical therapists, and mental health professionals to create a hybrid experience of VR combined with therapy sessions. Users actually meet a, a licensed therapist over a video once a week, and they get a personalized VR exercises and, and games to practice between sessions. Um, and they treat many core mental health uh, um, conditions like autism, ADHD, substance abuse, um, and even stroke rehabilitation and memory decline issues. And they're FDA approved and they're in network, uh, an in-network provider. Um, so they work with many of the big insurers uh, like Blue Shields and Medicare. So that's one approach. A second approach is TRIP. Um, it's a different angle. It's a VR platform um, to help us relax. They use mindfulness and meditations, um, and they created this gamified 3D journey of animations and sounds to help us relax. 
And the interesting part is that they're conducting research and working with hospitals and clinics to help patients improve the outcomes of, of health procedures, um, like in patients undergoing chemotherapy or patients um, in pre and post surgery conditions or um, in rehab and so forth. Um, so this is an example, um, TRIP and many others, um, for this futuristic inpatient experience uh, where instead of doctors and noisy devices, we will be able to log into an alternative reality and just relax. So we talked about scale. We talked about alternative realities. Let's just um, say a few words about data. Um, Web3 could possibly fuel more ways to analyze and create context around uh, mental health data. Since it's about decentralizing the internet through blockchain and NFT, it means that each one of us could own their own data um, in a very um, safe and encrypted way. And just imagine um, how a mental health therapy would feel like if the therapist would get um, information about us from multiple sources, of, co of course, that we decide which information we provide them through AI tools, um, and they can analyze it. But if we do that, this itself can really improve the personalization of care. And if this is done by many people through the blockchain, we get tons of new information in a private and encrypted way. And that's, by the way, true to healthcare in general. And there are many early stage startups trying to innovate in this market, and I'm sure we'll see more of that going on in, in the near future. Um, and we're running out of time, and I really want to leave a few minutes for questions. So just to summarize, um, there is a huge range of solutions and technology, especially today um, after 22 and 2020 and COVID and mental health solutions are for everyone and everywhere for each condition and for each life challenge and it can really help us prevent mental illness so there isn't really a reason why not to practice and I would love to hear questions and if anyone wants to ask me questions in private feel free to contact me through LinkedIn or email I'll leave that on the screen Personally, I'm a cognitive psychologist, I'm a web developer, and last year I founded MindTechGuru, which was established to revo revolutionize mental, health, when, mental well-being um, benefits that employers offer today. Mm -hmm.